Hey, Dr. Michael Rashek of Merogenomics once again. The company dedicated to medical DNA testing, but we'll be talking about vaccines once again. And the reason why is because I have a very interesting study to tell you about. It just came out recently from Denmark. The reason why it's interesting is because they tracked infection rates in household based on both the vaccination status and another really interesting aspect of this was that Denmark was being dominated by both Delta and the Omicron variant at the time when the study was being conducted which allowed comparison of how infectious Delta is uh, against in comparison to Omicron while the data was actually being collected at the same time so you do remove those differences in variables that way so why don't we get started on, on, on this so first of all households so what does that mean it means if a person whoever brought a virus into a household what they measure is the likelihood of household members being infected and then they divided it based on the vaccination status so that's what we're going to be looking at now let's provide a definition of what they meant by vaccination status because this is where it gets a little weird now first what they did is they measured everyone who was defined as fully vaccinated those were people who had received two shots of either Pfizer vaccine or the Moderna vaccine the vast majority of participants in the study were inoculated with the Pfizer vaccine okay now they also looked at people with booster so that's really interesting because that another little element of information that we can now learn about and basically booster means third shot of a respective vaccine so we're going to learn a little bit of information about that and then where the weird part get where, where it gets weird is with the unvaccinated status and the reason why is because basically they lumped everyone else in that category and that included people who were partially vaccinated, meaning they only had one, received one vaccine shot. Which is weird because basically that would not be the same as unvaccinated. It just means you've been vaccinated just once. That's not the same as not receiving a shot at all. Because even with a single immunization, you're already programming your immune system to some degree. Now for the rest of the unvaccinated people, that would include people who have not received any shot. But even that group of people can be divided into two categories and they should be divided into separate categories those who have never been infected and that would be diminishing group of people and that basically means such individuals who've never been vaccinated never been infected they only have their innate immunity working for them in terms of how they are protected from infection and then there's the unvaccinated who have been infected and they would have natural immunity it would be wise to actually separate these because then we can tease out different understanding and elements of how different aspects of natural immunity compares against vaccination that would be very valuable nevertheless basically we're looking at full vaccinations versus boosters versus everyone else in this study okay so let's get started first we're going to take a look at information across entire population and we're going to compare differences between the two variants the omicron and the delta so if somebody brought a virus into your household with omicron 31 percent of the household members were infected with delta 21 percent of the household members were infected meaning in the in the household setting if omicron was brought to the house irrespective of the status of vaccination status though everyone else in the house had a 31% likelihood of being infected, okay? And then Delta, 21%. So it clearly shows you that Omicron is more infectious, which we've already discussed in the last video. Now let's unpack that into the vaccination status, because that's, this is where it starts to get really interesting. Now, if you were unvaccinated, meaning you're the unvaccinated household member and someone brings the virus to you so you're being exposed to the virus by someone else then 29 percent of the time people were infected with omicron and 28 percent of the time people were being infected by delta so it shows you very little difference in terms of the likelihood of being infected by either variant if you're unvaccinated so that we'll talk about that now if you're vaccinated 
there's a difference when it came to delta and you were fully vaccinated then 19 percent of the time but fully vaccinated people were, were infected by delta but with omicron that jumped to 32 percent so big difference and this starts to show you indicates that omicron is a true immune escape variant and then when it comes to booster this is really interesting data because it shows you the power of boosters in terms of helping giving you additional protection from infection boosters were extremely effective against decreasing the likelihood of such person being infected by delta so in such households those who had boosters 11 percent of the time they got infected by delta so big drop in comparison and 25 percent of the time they were infected by omicron so still protected from omicron infection but to much much great, lesser degree when it then the protection against delta now what the authors also did is they compared the likelihood of infection in another way which was basically they wanted to see if fully vaccinated individuals are the common denominator then how likely unvaccinated people are like uh, are to be infected by a specific variant um, in comparison to fully vaccinated people and the same thing with those who had boosters so i'll give you an example when it comes came to both variants so again we're looking now both delta or omicron which were the dominant variants in denmark when the study was being done in comparison to fully vaccinated individuals those who were unvaccinated were 1.4 times more likely to be infected so you can see the how the comparison works here now when it came to those who had boosters they were 0.7 times more likely to be infected so that's below one means it's just a fraction it means they're less likely to be infected by either of the variants in comparison to those who are fully vaccinated this indicates that boosters do give you some level of protection against infection now when we start breaking down though against variants this is where it gets really interesting when it came to delta and you were unvaccinated individual you're 2.3 times more likely to be infected by delta in comparison to those who are fully vaccinated so this clearly shows you how strongly vaccinations were protecting people from being infected against delta now when it came to boosters in comparison to fully vaccinated as those who took a booster they were 0.3 almost 0.4 times as likely to be infected so that shows you big drop that shows you how va boosters are really really protecting individuals against infection from delta now when it comes to omicron this is where the real startling results come in because when it came to omicron unvaccinated individuals were 1.04 times as likely to be infected by omicron as the vaccinated individuals fully vaccinated individuals which clearly shows you there is no difference it's they are identical this means that those individuals who are unvaccinated versus vaccinated if you are exposed to omicron in a household you are just as likely to be infected by by that by Om the omicron variant so and the authors in fact commented that this clearly shows you to degree of how much the omicron variant evades immunity post vaccination and that's so this adds to the information we've discussed before that the omicron is is a powerful powerful immune escape variant now when it came to those who had boosters in comparison to the fully vaccinated those with boosters were 0.5 as likely to be infected so it clearly shows you that in comparison to those who are vaccinated boosters provide you a certain level of protection from infection for sure now the last thing that the authors did they also wanted to compare each vaccination status group and the default difference in infection rate between the two variants and this again shows you some really interesting data so for unvaccinated people in comparison to their likelihood of being infected by delta there were 1.2 
times as likely to be infected by the Omicron. And remember, this, this data includes also those who are partially vaccinated, which means they're actually skewing that those results. Without those people in the unvaccinated group category, they're very likely that number would have been even lower. So once again, this indicates that for unvaccinated individuals, Omicron has very little additional impact in the likelihood of them being infected in comparison to Delta. So that means their natural immunity is already protecting, protecting such individuals to the same degree against Omicron as they were already being protected previously against Delta. So they're not seeing much of a difference. Their natural immunity is at play. To be honest, I was quite surprised by this result because remember in, in the video about Omicron mutations, I was, I was discussing how much the Omicron can escape neutralizing antibodies, which is why we're seeing potentially, why we're seeing these increased rates of infection amongst the fully vaccinated people. But post natural infection, you should also be producing, you should also be producing uh, neutralizing antibodies that the Omicron would be able to escape. So I'm surprised to see not a bigger difference in unvaccinated individuals with infection of Omicron versus Delta, which basically means there might be additional additional level of protections that they, that they have. For example, maybe, and I'm just speculating here, perhaps the antibodies that unvaccinated individual produces against the virus post natural infection, they are producing antibodies against many viral proteins, which is not what, what happens uh, with uh, with vaccination, you only produce antibodies against the spike protein. So maybe that's why they see that additional protection that otherwise we should be seeing increased loss of protection because clearly Omicron escapes neutralizing antibodies. Now, when it came to the fully vaccinated people, in comparison to Delta, they were 2.6 times more likely to be infected by the Omicron. So you see massive drop there. And that massive drop in the protection clearly shows you to the degree how Omicron now escapes neutralizing antibodies in the vaccinated individuals to the degree that now basically vaccinated and unvaccinated people are being infected at the same rates in those households. And then for boosters, and this is a really interesting number in comparison to Delta, those who had boosters were 3.7 times more likely to be infected by Omicron as comparison to Delta. So what that means is that boosters, yes, they do protect you against infection, both when it comes to Delta as well as Omicron, but that protection was much, much greater against Delta variant than the Omicron. And even though the booster shots do provide you additional protection against the Omicron infection, you can see that with this particular variant, there are diminishing results of protection. And keep in mind, we also don't know how long this protection will last. That's not what was assessed at all in the study. And another thing is what was not assessed, we also do not know at all what are the outcomes for, the, for both the vaccinated versus booster people versus unvaccinated. We, outcomes were not being studied or measured. So keep in mind, this is only that we're talking about infection rates and who knows what happens afterwards. So what are the protection that vaccines give you afterwards post-infection so that we need other studies to get that information. All right, so that that's brings us to the end of this uh, this topic. So just wanted to let you know, we have another COVID Q&A uh, event number four coming up. I wanted to give away uh, 10 free tickets to the first 10 people who will subscribe to Merogenomics newsletter. Subscription link to the newsletter is in, provided in the description below. So check it out and uh, we hope to see you there. And the rest of you uh, also check it out. The way it works is, is uh, we answer the top 10 questions that we fish out from YouTube comments or emails. And then afterwards it's an open mic to the audience so we can have a 
we can have a chat all right if you like this video you know how it works give us a like subscribe to the channel share the video that's a big one obviously leave us a comment we clearly enjoy these we like all the different questions that people are posing and then we're using those questions as well so uh that's it for now everyone and we're looking forward to seeing you again in the future bye everyone okay so we are not quite done yet with this video because in the production of this video my interview with mike Baselli of passionate pioneers podcast came out and i wanted you to check it out the link to that podcast is in the description below it's real fun conversation about medical dna testing so take a listen also i wanted to let you know that a new survey has come out for you the audience to decide the future content of another video we did this before it was a lot of fun so i'm giving you a few options to decide what do you want to see the most uh, in a future video once again link to that is in the description below so i'm looking forward to seeing what you folks pick see you next time Thank you.